Earthquakes can occur without warning and cause great damage to areas with large civilian populations that lack structures engineered to withstand seismic activity. Pictured is a 2010 Haiti earthquake that caused the death of 230,000 people along with 14 billion in damages. What we have here is a strike to slip fault between two pieces of crust. So one piece of crust moves one direction, while the other piece of crust moves in the opposite direction. And when an earthquake happens, it happens at what's called the focus. At this focus, seismic activity happens when there's a release of energy. During this release of energy, most of the damage that occurs travels in surface waves across the surface. So during this, when there's a building, it experiences violent movement due to the earthquake. This video shows how buildings move when experiencing the seismic waves previously illustrated on the whiteboard. Our challenge is to find a solution in implementing a material in the structure of a building that can be widely used to absorb the shock of seismic activity without any damage being done to the building's framework. Shape memory alloys are alloys that can exhibit a shape memory effect, pseudo-elasticity, and cyclic behavior. After 1962, when interesting properties were discovered in a nickel-titanium alloy, a material which was later named nitinol, in-depth research and practical applications for SMAs began. The term shape memory describes the effect of restoring the original shape of a plastically deformed sample by applying heat to it. This results from a crystalline phase change known as thermoplastic martensitic transformation. The material is deformed while in a twinned martensitic phase and transforms back to the parent austenitic phase when heat is applied. Pseudoelasticity refers to a property materials display when under stress. Strain is generated during loading and recovered upon unloading. This simply means that a material that has undergone plastic deformation will bounce back to its original shape when the stress on it is removed. In this video, we will focus more on shape memory alloys that exhibit pseudoelasticity, which does not require heating. One example of this kind of SMA is nitinol. The applications of SMAs on structure control can be classified into three categories, passive, active, and active damage control. Passive structural control takes advantage of SMA's damping property to reduce the response and consequent plastic deformation of the structures subjected to severe loadings. We will focus on the passive structural control due to its more powerful properties for addressing the problem. Our project will focus on the passive structural control due to its more useful properties for addressing the earthquake problem. In a ground isolation system as seen here, SMA made isolators, which are installed between a superstructure and the ground to assemble an uncoupled system, filter the seismic energy transferred from the ground motion to the superstructure so that the damage of the superstructure is attenuated. Next, we will see the energy dissipation mechanism, which is using martensite or alcinite SMA elements integrated into a structure in order to absorb vibrations from the earthquake. Experimentation performed by David Fugazi at the European School for Advanced Studies in Reduction of Seismic Risk observed the seismic performance of buckling restrained and buckling allowed braces made out of steel versus super elastic shape memory alloy braces undergoing earthquake motions. The braces were compared through the maximum interstory drift exhibited on frames of three and six stories. This figure shows that the shape memory alloy braces were much more effective in reducing the inner story drift in a three story frame, with the SMA's recentering ability allowing it to experience an average maximum inner story drift of around 1.5%, while the buckling allowed steel braces commonly experience an average maximum inner story drift of over 4%. 
In this figure, the same effect is shown as the shape memory alloy braces experience an average maximum interstory drift on a six-story frame of 1.08% compared to 1.35% for the buckling restrained steel braces. These alloys are able to solve our technological challenge due to their super elastic properties. Super elasticity describes the ability to undergo a large amount of inelastic deformations and recover the original shapes after unloading. This property is a result of the SMA's crystal structure. When discussing crystal structure, one must first look at the existing phases of SMAs. SMAs have two crystal phases. There is an austenite phase, which is the stronger of the two, and there is a martensite phase. While martensite is the weaker phase, it is more stable at lower temperatures, which is why it is more commonly used. The martensite phase has a parallelogram crystal structure with 24 variations. When SMAs in martensite are subject to external stress, they deform through the so-called detwining mechanism, which transforms different martensite variations to the particular one variation that can accommodate the maximum elongation. Once the stress, or earthquake in our case, is no longer being applied to the SMA, it then returns to its original phase. Here we can see a demonstration of these super elastic properties at work. Notice how the reading glasses retain their original shape. Alloys can undergo classic fatigue, where final rupture and failure is caused by an increasing number of defects and cracks. Classical fatigue can be observed with a Waller curve of a material, which plots the stress at which the material will fail versus the number of transformation cycles. Shape memory alloys experience structural fatigue, which occurs when there is microstructural damage, and functional fatigue, which leads to a decreasing effect of shape memory after loading over time. Thus, due to fatigue, it can prove difficult to replace shape memory alloys being used for seismic applications. Furthermore, the process of manufacturing shape memory alloys involves many difficult machining techniques, which in turn makes their production expensive. Moreover, these techniques can only produce simple shapes not ideal for more complex structures. The super elasticity of shape memory alloys provide a plausible solution to countering the effects of seismic activity on structures in poor regions lacking in infrastructure. The two-phase crystal structure of shape memory alloys, the austenite and the martensite phase, allows for the material to withstand stress. However, while shape memory alloys offer improved technology for braces and in-grounds isolators, to counteract seismic activity, wide-scale use depends on continued research to find the optimal components of the alloy that limit long-term effects of fatigue as well as improve manufacturing to decrease their cost.